Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Jeff. Uh, today we're going to do the timing belt change uh, and we've done some of the stuff. We've removed in the previous videos some of the other like covers and stuff to get access to the belt. But today we're actually just going to be doing the belts. Now I just want to let it know uh, all the parts were supplied by Fur Parts. Um, but anyway, um, let's go ahead. I'm going to show you a few things underneath the car here before we actually get started. I, like I said, I've done some stuff. Kind of did some prep work. Um, I've already removed this the plate back here. This is um, I think a two millimeter, something like two and a half millimeter screws that fit in here. Remove this plate to uh, install this part here that locks the flywheel and so you can break the nut loose. This is a part from Hill Engineering. It is an AV3207 and um, you have to get this in the correct position. And once it's in there, you will see this big area on the flywheel. And then it kind of just fits in there in that slot. And then these screws come out and then they fit in here. These are just a little holder. So you tighten those up, that locks your flywheel into place. So then you can uh, break your nut loose on your uh, crank here. So the crank, that takes a 36 millimeter socket and you'll have to use a breaker bar uh, they're pretty tight and then um, I've already moved the flywheel the pulley on the flywheel and um, they recommend to put a spacer back in there over the crank and uh, I had a slot it's inch and a half PVC pipe I've slotted slid on there and then I'm gonna tighten this back down so then we can spin the motor around to get all of our um, alignments on the cam, the crank, and make sure it's on top dead center compression stroke. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get that on the compression stroke right now, and then uh, proceed on to change the belts. All right, um, so we've got this on the compression stroke. As you can see, um, the, li the marks line up here. There, there's the alignment marks up on the top of your valve covers here. If you, can, you really probably can't see, but this lines up with that. The same as here. Um, there's some marks in between here, as you can't see right now, because I got the vice grips installed. Vice grips, I put all the way to the furthest point back, because I don't want to bend these. I don't have a lot of pressure, but I think enough on there to keep this from rotating. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna loosen this nut here, which is 17 millimeter, and then I'm gonna try to pin this actuator here, this tensioner, so, and I can engage this pin here, which is just an Allen wrench, and I'm gonna try to recapture the piston in here. So when I loosen this all the way, it doesn't retract or extend. So, but anyway, uh, that's what I'm gonna do now. And this is like I said, 17. And then I'm gonna take this tool and I'm gonna rotate this in and out just to try to get this pin engaged. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, uh, we've got the tensioner loose. As you can see here, my pin is installed. So at this time, I'll be able just to take this completely out. And then uh, the belt should come off. And then uh, we'll be able to install our new belt. And um, they want the uh, tension, they want the belts through here tensioned up and then your slack goes in this area here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the new belt and then uh, try to install it. All right, um, we've got our belt installed on this passenger side here. We've torqued this to uh, 37 foot-pounds or 50 newton meters. Uh, the pin still slides in and out, so we're good there. And then um, we've got our measurement, 1.9 millimeter to 2.3 right here. So you're going to take a measurement here, um, and it should equal that. So um, 
Other thing we have to do is just do our tension. We'll have to do our frequency, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side before we do that and do those both together. Hopefully, it'll be with limits that we won't have to mess with this anymore. Um, if it's out, we may have to do a little tweak in here, but um, also before we do that, we're gonna roll it through a couple times, full couple full revolutions just to make sure everything moves freely and uh, we don't have anything that is binding. So we're gonna go ahead and change the other side. All right, uh, we've changed the uh, tensioner belt on the driver's side now. We've got it torqued up. Like I said, these are uh, 50 newton meters or 37 foot pounds on each side. Um, we took our measurements here. They're with uh, 1.9 to 2.3 millimeters. They were within limits. And then um, the pin here, I can slide it in and out, as you can see here, um, on both sides. So that slides in um so now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the motor see right there slides in uh, we're going to rotate the motor through a couple of revolutions make sure the belt um, stay in place everything looks good and then we're going to take the tensions with the uh, meter so uh, let's ro rotate that through and then uh, we'll take the tension next all right um, we've got these uh, tensioned up uh, they're coming in at both around 200 megahertz like I said, you have strum here and strum here and add the two together. Uh, I used to actually have a program called Easy Tension. Um, the Gates one, it doesn't seem like it was picking up the hertz. So this Easy Tension we went to and it seemed like um, the frequencies were coming in better with that. It was picking up the sound better. Um, we actually had to tweak a little bit. So, you know, at that point, if you tweak this beyond that, your pins won't slide in anymore because you're beyond that. That was like a starting point. So we actually had to do a little bit different, um, but then we got our frequencies to come in and now we're down to uh, just tightening our crank bolt to the specific torque. So um, we're gonna have to look that up and do that. And then to do that, we're gonna have to install the plate underneath to lock the motor back in. So we're gonna put that plate back in, put it in the correct position and then torque the nut for the crank. All right, uh, now we've got this tool in place. You'll have to line the, uh, you know, the uh, flywheel to the correct position to get this tool installed. And then uh, go ahead and torque. We, or I've already done this. Torque our nut with the uh, 36 millimeter socket to about 144 uh, Newton meters. Or uh, foot 144 pounds. foot pounds. Um, you know what the Newton meters was? Um, 186, something like something that. Something like yeah. that. Uh, um, but anyway, that should conclude the belt change, the pulleys are installed. Now uh, we'll have to go ahead and install our accessory belts and stuff and then our covers and everything. But um, we're done with the actual timing belt change. So we'll go ahead and move on and then install the accessory belts, put the covers back on, and then hook up the uh, coolant line. So we'll go continue on. All right, um, now I'm gonna go ahead and since we have the car up, I'm gonna install this cover over the flywheel that takes a number um, three Allen, I believe. Mm, yeah, that's what that is, a number three Allen. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and install this back up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that this time. All right, um, I'm starting to reinstall the timing belt covers. And um, it's got some different screw lengths here. Your shortest screw lengths are gonna go up in the upper positions here and over here. This one here is a little bit longer. Right here, this one's a little bit longer. And then uh, the uh, longest ones, which have these extra little adapter here with a number 10 wrench flat. These will actually go right here. Um, this is what actually helps hold on your bottom cover. So the one will go here and the other one will go on the other cover in the same position. But uh, the shorter screws are at the top, the longer ones are towards the bottom, and then the ones that are, are this weird looking screw, they go bottom center on both. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall these and then uh, kind of place this pulley in position or this bearing in position for the other belt 
for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and install all this stuff. All right, now I have uh, both timing covers installed. Uh, now it's time to uh, start changing these accessory belts. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and change those one at a time and then getting those tensioned up and then check the frequency on those also. So we're gonna go ahead and do that at this time. So we're gonna change the belt on the uh, power steering pump. And to do that, this is gonna take a number six Allen. You're gonna loosen this first. And then you're gonna rotate this nut back here, which is a number 10, to loosen this belt. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now and uh, get that one changed first. So let's go ahead and proceed. All right, I've replaced the uh, power steering pump belt and uh, make sure you retighten this back up because that this is actually what holds it in place. This is just kind of moves it back and forth. This has like, a little bit of slop in it, but uh, just like I said, around 90 hertz, strum this in the longest section and um, it should be around 90 hertz. So uh, the next belt I guess we're going to install would be, um, I guess, the AC compressor. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, that's going to be at 131 hertz. So um, I'm going to go get that and then install that next. All right, uh, I've installed the accessory belts already. Um, just check these for tightness. The frequency on these is the water pump is 90. The water and alternator is 90 hertz. And the AC is 131. Um, I noticed that when you're tightening the center bolt here to secure the pulleys here, when you're tightening the, this one and this one, this will increase your frequency tension. So um, if your uh, frequency is a little low, let's say um, the one on the right, the AC, let's say you're at 121. By the time you tighten that center nut, it's probably going to be closer to 131 or slightly over. And then uh, this idler pulley here, this kind of just rests against the belt. It doesn't, you're not really supposed to apply any tension to the belt. It just kind of like follows the belt that keeps it from slapping. Same thing with the upper one. I have to adjust that yet. I mean, that doesn't really apply any tension to the belt. Um, that just kind of like helps it from slapping vibrating back and forth. But uh, anyway, I have these all tensioned up. I'm gonna put the specs in the notes at the end, but uh, that should complete the belt installation. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reinstall this lower cover here on the housing here. And then uh, I'll be able to hook up the water line too, the coolant lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, uh, like I said before, I have all the belts installed. These like idler pulleys here do not put any tension on the belt. They just kind of like ride along. So you set them right against the belt. You might have to hold it while you're tightening it up, but um, it should not push any pressure on the belt itself. It just like rides along the belt. It keeps the belt from slapping. So um, at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and install this upper cover here in the center. And then uh, I'll be able to install the lower than afterwards and then um, hook my water line back up, my coolant line here. So I'm going to go ahead and install these covers and the coolant line at this time. So let's go on. All right. Um, don't forget to uh, install this filler piece here, this square box, a rectangular box. It's 10 millimeter. One screw over there. And it's got this standoff over here. It's a 10. And then your clamp for your water line hooks to that and don't forget to hook up your clamps on your water line and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up right now and I've got to resecure the water line in the cabin up there and then uh, once I get that done I'll put this bottom cover on for the belt so uh, let me go ahead and finish this up this time all right uh, I've got my Filler box here installed with the clamp here for the water line or coolant line. Got this clamp here tight. This one's tight. This is tight. I didn't take that apart. So now at this time, we're going to go ahead and stick this lower cover on. Um, 
the shorter screws go on the top, the bottom, the longer screws go on the bottom. Like I said, that goes right there. And then I'll have to go back in the, um, and then I'll have to get like a long extension and uh, like a universal joint to get that upper screw there. That one on the other side is kind of a bear. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that right now. And uh, hopefully this will be, this will complete this area. And then the only thing I have left is the back of the cams, the valve cover. So we're gonna do this and then we'll go to do that next. All right, as you can see, I have the covers on the cams now. So at this point, uh, I'll proceed on to installing the spark plugs and the coils and uh, we'll see what happens after that. All right, uh, I've got the spark plugs here. They're new plugs, they're NGK. Um, they are NGK PMR8B. That's what uh, came out of here. So um, I checked the gap. The gap's supposed to be 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 millimeter or approximately 25 thousandths um, in inches. So uh, about 25 thousandths is like right in here. Uh, that's the equivalent of 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. Um, and also what I'm going to do is I got some uh, thread lubricant, spark plug thread lubricant I'm going to throw on here. Uh, but when you're putting the lubricant on there, make sure you don't get it down by the electrode. Keep it up on the upper half. Uh, it can foul the plugs. So um, when you're applying that, try not to get it on the electrode. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put the lubricant on there, put the plugs in, torque it up, and then proceed on the coil installation. All right, um, I've got the spark plugs in, coils on, the plugs attached to the uh, the plugs installed to the coils. Those are all on. Um, I put this the vent tube for the um, Brocker bot or valve covers, they're installed. Uh, that was a, like I said, 19 millimeter. And uh, remember, you got to hold the top. The top does not turn, the bottom turns. So I've got those reinstalled. And uh, other than that, I've got, you know, some interior panels to put back on, but I really can't do that yet because of the, I'll have to uh, put coolant back in the system and uh, bleed that and the bleeder is up towards the front. So uh, I think I'll just make that another video and then um, this will be the end of the timing belt video. So um, anyway, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, like it, tell your buddies to subscribe and we'll continue to make more. Um, other than that, I will uh, put a spec sheet in the descriptions of all the torques and the tooling that we used um, so other than that I think this concludes the timing belt change on the Ferrari 360 hey, thanks for, thanks again for watching and keep on viewing we're gonna be supplying more videos like I said we've got a lot yet to do on this so uh, stay tuned thanks a lot